What's up? I'm Blake and this is my first impression video for my new 2011 MacBook Air. Announced and released just a couple days ago on July 21st, 2011. As you can see, it's the 11.6 inch model and for this video I'm going to be doing some side-by-side -side comparisons with my late 2010 MacBook Air, which is also 11.6 inches. First we're going to discuss some of the differences and then a bit later on I'll do some speed tests and some benchmarking. So let's get started. First of all, this is the packaging for the new model. It's exactly the same as the old packaging, same size and everything. Um, it, it comes with the same exact uh, 45 watt MagSafe charger. And the only thing missing really from the package that the old model had is recovery media. There's no disc and there's no um, USB flash drive. So um, a bit more on that later though. Much like the last MacBook Pro refresh, the new model is outwardly almost identical to the old model, save for just a few things. First on the keyboard, there are some changes in the function keys. The old model has a eject key right next to the power key, and the new model does not. Um, the old model also has a expose and dashboard key, while the new model has instead a launch pad and mission control key, and it also has a couple keys for adjusting the brightness of the keyboard backlight, which is uh, another new addition to the 2011 MacBook Air, which I think a lot of people will be excited about. And of course, the new model has Thunderbolt, so that's the last difference on the outside. There's a Thunderbolt symbol in place of the display symbol on the right-hand side of the laptop. So um, the other changes, obviously, are all inside. Let me show you the specs. So there you go, both of these models are the 128 GB version. The biggest change in the new one um, is that it has a much better processor and double the memory. So to demonstrate that, the first test we're going to do is a boot test. It's going to be a cold boot into a new user profile. I'll turn them on at the same time. new model and old model. Okay, I'm going to put him to sleep at the same time. Almost exactly the same. And wake him up at the same time. The old one came up faster out of sleep and there's the new one. Let's shut him down at the same time. The old one and the new one just a tiny bit behind. The first benchmark is Geekbench. You can see the new model got a score of 4921 and the old model got a score of 2247. So a, a really great improvement and uh, I've zoomed in so hopefully you can see the sub scores if you want. The second benchmark is Nova Bench. You can see the new model got an overall score of 476 and the old model got an overall score of 273. Um, as far as the sub scores, obviously the CPU and memory sub scores for the new model are much better than the old model. However, the graphics score on the new model is only 22 compared to 50 for the old model. Um, I'm not sure how much faith I'm going to put into the graphics, at least the graphics portion of this Nova Bench benchmark just because this is the second time now where a new model has underperformed an old model. So um, the new model does have Intel graphics where the old model has Nvidia graphics and the Intel graphics are supposed to be much better. So I think this is just a problem with this particular benchmark. Um, and as far as the last subscore, the hardware um, subscore, 20 for the old model and 27 for the new model. Um, of note, I think the drive write speed on the old model, 114 megabytes per second, and the new model, 223 megabytes per second. So almost twice as fast for the new model. I think this is because um, the new model has the Samsung. SSD in it where the old model has a Toshiba SSD and from what I've read the Samsung is supposed to be faster so makes sense. The last benchmark is Cinebench so we're hopefully going to find out if the graphics in the new model really are better. Um, first before we do that though a quick disclaimer. I'll run the OpenGL test at the same time. Okay the results are in and I stand corrected. The new model with a score of 10.19 frames per second the old model with a score of 10.21 frames per second. So the old model did beat 
the new model even if just by a little bit. Um, I did do a little bit more um, looking into it and it seems like the old model actually might have better graphics than, than the new model. So um, take that into consideration or do a little bit more independent research if you want. I'm going to move on to the CPU test and I'll start at the same time. The CPU test is finished and the new model pretty much trounced the old model with a score of 1.93 points compared to 0.81 points for the old model. Cinebench makes it kind of obvious why this happened. Um, it does report that both um, systems have two cores while the new model has four threads at 1.6 gigahertz and the old model only has two threads at 1.4 gigahertz. And that's it for the benchmarking. I did mention earlier in the video that the new MacBook Air does not come with any sort of recovery media. Uh, side note, that does also go for the new newly announced um, Mac Minis. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's a trend that continues with new Apple computers. Anyway, I wanted to quickly show you what you would do if you're actually in a situation where you would need recovery media. When you boot the computer, you would just hold Command and R and um, before the gray screen and after several seconds you would come up to this uh, Mac OS X Utilities screen. There are four options from here, Restore from Time Machine Backup, Reinstall Mac OS X, Get Help Online, and Disk Utility. Very reminiscent of the days of actual physical recovery media. Um, a quick note, if you do go to reinstall Mac OS X, you will need to be able to connect to the internet to do that, so hopefully you have a broadband connection. One thing that immediately came to my mind when I saw this is, okay, if you can get OS X reinstalled, what about iLife? These computers do come with iLife. What do you do about that? Apple's solution for that is pretty clever. If you open the App Store and then go to Purchased, you'll see a prompt that says you have three apps to accept. GarageBand, iMovie, and iPhoto. Um, over here there's a button for Accept. I haven't done this yet, but I'm presuming what this does is it actually ties the those apps that you essentially purchased when you bought the computer. It's bundled into the price of the computer. Um, it ties those apps to your Apple ID. That's great because you would be able to re-download them after you reformatted the um, drive and reinstalled OS X if you needed to. However, I wondered what would happen if you sold your computer eventually to somebody um, yeah, they would be able to reinstall OS X if they needed to, but as for iLife, though the apps that essentially came with the original computer are now tied to your Apple account, your Apple ID, um, your iTunes account, and not theirs. So I think they would have to repurchase iLife, and I know that sounds less than ideal, but Apple probably feels that it doesn't happen often enough for them to offer a better solution. So if anybody does have more or different information about how this is handled, go ahead and just uh, put in a comment. So that's pretty much it for this first impressions video. The new model definitely faster than the old one and the backlit keyboard is very nice. Um, I think the old model was already a great computer and the new model just definitely improves upon that. Apple calls it the ultimate everyday notebook and I tend to agree. It's very small, lightweight, and easy to take with you wherever you go every day. No, it doesn't have a disk drive, but they're making a bet that you don't need a disk drive every day. I know I certainly don't. I think Apple feels that the writing is on the wall for the disk drive, and I guess I tend to agree. They did take it out of their Mac Mini. Um, you can no longer get a disk drive in the current generation of Mac Minis. And um, they did discontinue the white polycarbonate MacBook. And so at the $9.99 price point in an Apple laptop, you do not get a disk drive. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to be disappointing. I think some people maybe will be disappointed, but most people probably won't care. If you do need a disk drive, there's always uh, the external super drive. So in conclusion, I think the old MacBook Air was already an excellent option if you're in the market for a new Mac laptop, and this new model just makes it that much better. Even if the graphics are not improved, much faster processors and backlit keyboard I think are going to make people very happy. Hope this video was helpful. I encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, my name is Blake, and thanks for watching.